Welcome to our first show of Sun City News for 2019. We hope you had a wonderful holiday. I'm your host, Norma Taylor, and here are some of the news stories we're covering for you this week. We have some important community association news. Did you make any New Year's resolutions? We checked with some of our residents on what they said. And reporter Chris Chase has news to know from Jasper County. Our medical consultant, Dr. Lou Valenti, talks about seniors driving. Those stories and more are coming up. Sun City News starts now. This is Sun City News with Norma Taylor and the Sun City News team covering our community and the Low Country. Technology Launch Week is this week, January 7th through the 11th at Hidden Cypress. The Community Association has debuted a new website, mobile app, and more technology changes. Make sure you attend a resident session during Technology Launch Week, where members of the launch crew will guide you through Sun City's new suite of technology features. Check E! News Weekly for the agenda. A new art gallery exhibit debuts at Palmetto Commons this week, featuring the theme, View Through a Window. Stop by resident services to see artwork and photography by other Sun City residents. The artwork on display is available for purchase. Chartered clubs and registered community groups are asked to attend an orientation to discuss the approved changes from the Lifestyles Task Force. Orientations are at 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, January 9th, 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, January 16th, and 1 p.m. on Monday, January 28th at Magnolia Hall. Attendance at one of the orientations is mandatory. Now remember to hold on to your Sensations double issue. There will not be a magazine delivered in January. The next magazine will be the February 2019 issue. For more information about these events and other community activities, check your email inbox for E! News Weekly or log on to suncityhiltonhead.org. With the new year upon us, we all make resolutions on what we are going to do better. Well, we checked in with some of our residents to hear what they had to say. I'm here with John Murphy, and John, it's the new year. Did you make any New Year's resolutions? Well, greetings and Happy New Year to all the Sun City residents. Uh, just the, I guess, the normal one to, uh, to get through a healthy and happy year with the uh, family. Uh, my wife is the most supportive person in the world, and as long as she carries me through the year, we're going to make it. Okay, well, those are great New Year's resolutions, but, I mean, it's not the typical one about, you know, I'm going to exercise no. more, I'm going to go on a diet, I'm going to, you know. No, we, so, we all seem to fail on those about uh, an hour and a half into the New Year, so. You got that right. So yeah. I'm not going to make any of those kinds of resolutions, but it would be nice to, to, to again, to, to go through a safe and happy year. Okay, well, happy thank New you year. very much, John, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all. I'm here with Mike Davis, and Mike, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Uh, yes, I did. I will want to have a better year as far as uh, playing tennis, uh, enjoying the photography club here and going on more trips and just having a better year all around. Those are, th those are high achieving goals. Do you think you're going to be able to reach all of them? Hopefully, yeah. Like I said, I've enjoyed my time here. Uh, I've only been here about a year and a half, so it's all been great. Okay, well, that sounds like good and good luck with that. Thank but, you very much and same you. to you. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm here with Lynn Sharp. And Lynn, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Well, it's kind of a bogus tennis resolution, but I've decided to be even more forgiving of myself on the tennis court and my partners and anything to do with the game. So no arguing? No arguing. Just have a great time. At this point in my life, what's not to be happy for? That's right. That's great. And I hope you achieve it, Lynn. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all right, I'm here with Frank Toporowski. Very good. Got it, huh? You got it. All right, did you make any New Year's resolutions, Frank? Uh, New Year's resolutions to uh, indoctrinate ourselves into Sun City. We moved here three weeks ago and just starting to meet new people, having fun, and we're going to play it by ear from there. Wow, okay. Well, good luck to you, and welcome to Sun City. You're going to love it here. That's what I hear. Okay. Thank you very much. And I hope you win this bocce game. It's going to happen. Okay, <laughs> Thank good, you. good luck. <laughs> I'm here with Dan Rising, and Dan, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Yes, to remain active and beat Michigan again this year. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you going to remain active? By joining more clubs and meeting more people here in Sun City. It's beautiful, wonderful people. Well, you've got a lot of clubs to join and a lot of activities, so I hope you succeed. 
Thank you very much. Okay, Happy New Year. You too. Reporter Chris Chase attended the December First Friday meeting in Hardyville and brings us up to date on Jasper County happenings. We're here with Hardyville City Manager. Now, Mike, you met recently with Pulte, and you got kind of a 10-year plan. Could you share it with us? We did a 10-year strategic growth plan. So we basically have 13 active development agreements in the city. So we solicited the business plan, strategic modeling from each of the consultants, each of the developers, and asked them what type of, how much product are they going to do every year for the next 10 years. And we compiled all the data in order to be able to do some strategic planning. Um, and what's astounding is, as we all know, the city is relatively small. I'm full service city now. We're about 6,000 population. Based upon the results, which are very surprising, we believe by 2028 the city will be over 30,000 people. So that's all over 10,000 housing units and several million square feet of commercial industrial development. That's so very exciting. Here at the Sun City, and there's a lot of obviously development going on there. You've got <coughs> 150 homes plus per year. And as we know, they, the Pulte really recently approved another 451 units. So, can I ask you a question? It had to do with the other chart. Okay. And, and you know, it looked like it was like almost like a straight line going up at 2,000 individuals uh, right. coming in. Is that the feeling now? Because if the court was going to come to fruition, you you probably see a bigger hump in the middle than that. Yeah, absolutely. Than, that, that, and that's a good point, but that's irrespective of what happens with the Jasper Ocean Terminal. Are we seeing that 2,000 right now? Right well, what we're seeing now is, so we were at 200, you know, 200, 25. This year, we're going to probably do about 400. We did, we did we're going to double what we've done, and then we believe it's going to go from 400 to 1,000 units per year. I mean, that's a significant amount of building, as you know. The plan also includes all the um, expenditures and revenues that will be produced as a result of this growth and development so the city can adequately plan for services, buildings, vehicles, and people in order to continue to provide the effective services that you as a taxpayer want and deserve for the city. Another one of our main projects that we're going to talk about today is we're going to build a multi-purpose community and recreation center. We are going to start this spring and build an approximately 40,000 com recreation community center, which will be located right on, on Smith Road, right across from Royal Live Oaks. So it will provide an enormous amount of recreational and community um, activities for, for our, our, the residents in the, of the Low Country and Hardyville. So we are thrilled about that to serve the, age, the growing population of the community. And it is growing in leaps and bounds. Yes, ma'am, just as that chart indicates. So it go comes with a lot of opportunities and some challenges. Well, it looks like you're meeting the challenges beautifully. We're trying. One team, one dream. Oh, I like that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. When we come back, our medical consultant, Dr. Lou Valenti, discusses the pitfalls that seniors face while driving. Judy Lampe introduces a new edition of her Low Country Snapshots. Our association gives us tips on the new tech launch. We'll be right back after these important messages. The process of aging affects all of us, and our medical consultant, Dr. Valenti, is here to talk about the increased number of risks associated with aging and driving. Dr. Lu? The act of driving automatically places everyone at risk, but not necessarily to the same degree. Everybody understands that safety must come first, but there are many deviations and variations that can affect one's driving ability, including rage, impatience, selfishness, and disrespect for other people's rights. There is another factor that can increase risks, and that is aging. Everyone ages differently, and some can continue driving into their 80s and 90s, while others shouldn't drive at all. Statistics show that seniors receive most citations for traffic violations and are at higher risks for mishaps 
that can result in serious injuries, hospitalizations, and death. Fatal crashes r rise sharply at the age 70. Some of the risk factors for accidents include health issues such as impaired vision, hearing, mobility, and general mental impairment. Singers are more sensitive to drugs which remain in their systems much longer. Additionally, singers take many more drugs daily which increase the risk of serious drug interactions. There are some signals for when we should stop driving, and they are when drivers are always tooting at you, if there are more than the usual number of dents on the car, when one gets lost frequently, or is physically compromised. <clears throat> there are also environmental factors that affect senior drivers, such as road conditions, weather, night driving, heavy traffic, and detours. Seniors may also be easily distracted or have less patience due to life's challenges. You all know the effects of alcohol and drugs, and I'm not going to go into that now. But we can reduce the risk of accidents simply by being more considerate and careful when driving. Changes with aging occurs gradually and are difficult to recognize, therefore, Feedback from family and friends can save lives. Remember, the interval of time between a pleasant drive and a tragedy is about two seconds. Therefore, having intact reflexes is paramount. I'm Dr. Lou Valente for Health Matters. Judy Lampe's January edition of Low Country Snapshots features Bob Rasmussen, who has made his mark at Sun City TV and in the Computer Club, plus safety and services. The list goes on and on. Welcome to Low Country Snapshots. I'm your host, Judy Lampe. Today, my guest is Bob Rasmussen, and Bob has been in the Sun City community for quite a number of years, and we're going to hear about his experience with volunteerism. Welcome, Bob, to Snapshots. Thanks, Judy. You have been a member of many clubs and groups. Some you started and others you wrote charters for. Explain. So there were a number of clubs that I sat down and with the new club officers, we would develop their bylaws. The bike club, photo club, forum club, the computer club I wrote the uh, charter. Uh, bird club I was also very involved in. You volunteered at the front gate since 2001. What are some of the projects that you've worked on? One of the very first things that I did was draw out a street map. Then when we started safety and service, can you believe we would actually do the gate passes by hand? Somebody bet me I couldn't replace that in two weeks. They lost. Thank you very much, Bob, for being my guest today. I mean, it is so clear that you are a valuable member of our community. Um, and to think that all the volunteer work you do, you say that it's really because you're having a lot of fun, but you have really put in a lot of time and energy and really have made Sun City a better place in which to live. Well, I came here young and I wasn't ready to just sit back and watch TV, so I've enjoyed every minute of it. Sun City Hilton Head has blasted off into 2019 with all new technology systems, including a revamped website. Take a few minutes to self-register for the new website, the community calendaring system, and the AAM All Access Mobile app. Find instructions in your latest tech update. If you still need help, then come out to Launch Week from January 7th through the 11th in Hidden Cypress. You'll meet the launch crew, which is a team of association staff, AAM staff, technology partners, and resident volunteers. They'll be happy to assist you with registration. Attendees will also be eligible to win great prizes. Resident sessions start at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, January 8th. Look for a complete schedule in E! News Weekly. Still more to come on Sun City News, a wonderful story about Christmas cloggers. 
Randy Selman fills us in with 2019 Entertainment Review. And Ray Tapio updates us on sports news. We'll return after some messages from our sponsors. Well, it's time for entertainment, and Randy Selman is here. Randy, it's 2019, so what's new? Actually, Norma, what's old is new again, as you will hear. First of all, I would like to wish all of you a very happy and healthy new year. Just when you thought the entertainment couldn't get any better, grab your calendar and reserve the dates for these upcoming events right here in Sun City and also right outside our gates. Opening on the Magnolia Hall stage on Thursday, January 24th at 7.30 is Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap. The Mousetrap is the longest continually running production in theatrical history, having played for 66 years and over 25,000 performances. It is a whodunit in the true fashion of Agatha Christie. Twists and turns and a surprise ending will have you on the edge of your seat. I'll talk more about this on next week's show. So hold on. Tickets are $23 and are now on sale at the Magnolia Hall box office or by calling 843-645-2700. On Tuesday, January 29th at 7 p.m., the dance series continues in Pickney Hall with the Jacksonville-based band Cloud9. This band will take you back with their high-energy recreations of vintage rock and roll. Tickets are $18. You can catch Disco Fever on Monday, February 11th at 4.30 or 7.30 p.m. when the band Lava Lamp performs in Magnolia Hall. Remember AM Radio? This 70s band will bring you all the music you used to listen to while driving in your car or locked away in your room. So grab your bell bottoms, wear your hair big, and get ready to boogie. Lava Lamp is one of the best 70s band in the Southeast. The band blends an entertaining mix of 70s soul, funk, disco, and AM gold hits into a frenzy of onstage excitement. Tickets are $26 and are limited to six tickets per household. Tickets for these two shows are available at Lifestyle Services or online. Drive a couple of miles outside the gates to the Technical College of the Low Country, and you will be treated to one of the top big bands in the region, the 18-piece all-volunteer Evolution Big Band will be performing on Thursday, February 21st at 7 p.m. The band is directed by Sun City's own David Fleming and is sponsored by the Sun City Lions Club. Tickets are $25 and reservations can be made online at BufordArtCouncil.org. Proceeds this year support the Arts Council of Buford County, the Low Country Youth Jazz Foundation, and the Low Country Foundation for Military Heroes. Since its founding in 2004, the band has raised more than $150,000 for nonprofit in the area. I will be bringing you more information about this amazing band in the weeks to come, so be sure to tune in. I'm Randy Selman, and that's your entertainment report. Remember, life is entertaining, so go out and enjoy the show. Sun City residents give in so many ways. Here's a group that dances the holiday spirit into hearts, young and old. Recently, the Sun City Cloggers spent many enjoyable hours dancing for Canterfield, NHC, Benton House, Bloom at Belfair, and the Agape Center in Hardyville. Most of these are assisted care living facilities, but the Agape Center has an after-school program for children from preschool to fifth grade. The children enjoyed the music and dancing so much they couldn't stay seated and were up and joining the women in no time. They also had steps they wanted to show off, so that dancing around the tree was a convivial and fun-filled experience for everyone. Gloria Chrissy and Alice Whitman organized a dozen dancers in the different venues clogging to Christmas favorites. Besides these, Brookdale, the Life Care Center, and Bloom, all on Hilton Head Island, 
also request these entertaining women. Now they are holiday spirits. Well, Ray Tapio's here, so it must be time for sports. Ray, New Year, 2019. Fantastic weather, right? Well, Sun City has ways to work out no matter what the weather. Tennis players now have the opportunity to get in tune for the coming season of tennis and tournaments. Every Saturday during the month of January, our tennis pros will be giving lessons at 11.30 a.m., starting off with the Hot Shot Volley on January 12th. Be sure to sign up at the local building or call 843-705-4034 so you can be a winner in the months to come. And so that you can chase down those drop shots that Sun City players are famous for, sign up for the Fitness Center Fitness Demonstration on Thursdays, January 17th and 24th at 1 p.m. Oh, pre-registration is required, so get over to the fitness center and sign up early. I know it might be a bit early, but this is one event that you, is always sold out. We Bowling is back and starts off on February 7th at Pinckney Hall at 6 p.m. Bowling balls and shoes are not required. You can sign up online or at Lifestyle Services. Get in on this early as space is limited. So, for 2019, let your competitive juices overcome your excuses. Ray Tapio, Sun City Sports. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. We invite you to check out Sun City TV's weekly program schedule and Sensations Magazine. And now check highlights and alerts on Twitter at Sun City TV HHI. Also, email us at suncitytvhh at gmail.com. And make sure you tune in next week to find out all the news that's happening in our community. In the meantime, I hope your week is full of only good news. For Sun City News, I'm Norma Taylor, and I'll see you next week.